Khan, Khan. I praise to the Most High God, man. I'm, I'm gonna say it again. First and foremost, call Halal Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's all praise to the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son of the world, ignorantly called Jesus Christ, man. It's Big Yachty back at it again with another lesson. And I just want to, I just want to put this disclaimer out, right? I posted another, I posted another link on the community channel, on the community tab for Mailbag Mondays, version three, the third week we're doing this. So. If you got any type of biblical questions, drop them down on there. All you got to do is just hit the comment button. Drop them down right there. And I'll add it to the list of stuff I'm going to go over on Mailbag Mondays. And if I don't got enough, I'll just carry it over into another week and just teach a lesson. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter, really, right? Edification is coming out regardless. So tonight, I, I really want to just jump into it, really. The lesson's over. It's, it, you see the title. It's called... Does God make you choose evil? But it's really more broader than that. Like the lesson, a little bit more broader than that. It's more about more about election and who people and who uh, who God has rejected. And you see that through the way people act. You see that through the through the way that they're uh, that they receive correction. You see that through the way people. I mean, just operate just in general through the way that they, through the way, through, it's like through the way that they act and through the, and through the uh, characteristics they display, and that's a biblical thing that we can see. We can see who God rejects, and we can see who God chooses to pull out of this world. And this lesson really is is a, a broader lesson than the one that I taught on Deacon's cancel Xmas uh, video. I, I kind of wanted to basically. I just wanted to make it a little bit deeper than what it was because I, I had a I had a time limit. So I want to basically go into a little bit more precepts, approach it in a different angle, go into some of the same stuff, and then just key in on it a little bit more than I did. So the first one I want to go into, the first precept I want to go into is Jeremiah. I want to read this in another translation now that I'm now that I'm thinking about it. Jeremiah 10, verse 23. Right, because one thing we have to realize is everybody on this planet does not have free will. I just want to say that at this point blank period, we don't have free will from our vantage point. We're making choices to make it looks like we have free will, but the Lord already predestinated us to be a certain type of way, and He's already predestinated and already knows how we're going to be and how we're going to turn out. And he set things up to be that way. He set people up to be the, the people who were rejected. He set people up to be the people who the, the Lord chose. That's how the way this world works. And you know that through the precepts. But the first one I want to, I want to, the first ideology I want to knock out is that the Lord predestines people to be a certain type of way. The Lord, the, you don't have free will to just will your way out of the Lord's judgment for you. If the Lord judges for you to be rejected, you're going to be rejected. If the Lord judge for you to be chosen, you're going to do the works of those who are going to be chosen. Like I said before, we don't know who the elect is, but uh, but I'm damn sure I'm damn sure going to do what the elect is going to be doing to be saved. You see what the elect is going to be doing. You see they're going to be keeping the commandments of the Lord and they're going to have the faith of our Lord. They're going to be doing those things and the rejected people are going to do the opposite of that. They won't be able to they won't be able to examine themselves. They won't be able to correct themselves. They will not be able to be refined. And if they are in this truth, they'll fall out of this truth because they're not chosen. And a lot of people who really who are really fallouts, man, to be honest, they never really was in this. There's no way you can be in this here that salvation is for Israel, here that uh, you got to keep these laws, you're going to get put to death, All everything regarding this, right? Everything regarding this. There's no way you, 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 you taste of all that and you were actually in this and fall out. It's impossible, man. You were never in this from the beginning. Why? Because the Lord chose you not to be in this. You were that seed that the Lord did not water. He didn't give the increase to you. That's why you. That's why you, you, you see people uh, so called abide for a time, and then then they're out of uh, they're out of here because the Lord didn't choose them. But it all boils down to predestination, and it all boils down to you don't have uh, free will. Now let's go into some precepts to prove what I'm saying. This is Jeremiah 23. Let me see what I want to read this. I'm just going to read this in various translations. I'm reading the KJV first because I know how people are. You're KJV. It says, oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself, 
it is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. That I mean, even in a regular King's English, you can tell there's no free will. It's, you're not. It's not inside of you to pick which way you're going to go. The Lord picked. You already predetermined which way you're going to go. Let's read this in another translation. Which ones did I read? I think I wrote down some. The NIV. Let's see. It says, Lord, I know that people's lives are not their own. It is not for them to direct their steps. The same thing. It's not for us to direct our steps. The Lord already directed our steps and knows the end. He foretold the end from the beginning, man. He already knows how we're going to be. He already directed our steps. <laughs> oh, man. The water Sylvia Walker, man. Barack Thumb, man. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Barack Thumb, man. You're great. <laughs> Gracious donation, right? And uh, let me get another one. It says the N the NLT. It says, "I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. We are not able to plan our own course. We're not able to plan our own course." It's just, it's saying the same thing over and over and over again. This ain't you. It's ain't, it's not in you to uh to just will your way into into salvation or will your way into rejection. The Lord already chose which one you're going to be and. and it, that's going to be revealed into you at the end. If you're still in this in the end, most likely you're chosen because that's the people who are going to be saved. And another version of, of saved, the, uh, another uh, word that saved is translated into is preserved, preserved until the end. And if you're rocking with this all the way to the end, most likely you're going to be saved. Most likely you're the one the Lord chose. Let me see it in, in the uh, Amplified. I like this one too. It says, oh Lord, I know that the path the path of uh, of life of a man is not in himself. It is not within the limited ability of man, even even one at his best. Even one at his best, right? I'm gonna read that again. It is not within the limited ability of man, even one at his best, to choose and direct his steps in life. You can't do it, man. I don't know how much more clear. This is why I like the other translations because it makes it verbatim clear. Like there's no, there's no other. Uh, let me just add some extra verse to, to contradict. It, it's, it's verbatim clear, man. Verbatim, and you'll have people argue with, "Oh, we do have free will." Like there's no verse that says that. And and on top of it, it's very. There's there's a whole bunch of verses that contradict that that understanding altogether. Like this one and the next one I'm about to get, Proverbs. Uh, see Proverbs sixteen verse nine. I just want to you. Wow, that failed the Google project. <laughs> Proverbs sixteen verse nine. I'm reading the KJV for all you KJV onlys. Uh, it says a man's heart. Can y'all see that? Y'all probably can't. So let me zoom this in. That should be better. Let me see. Let me full screen this so I can see. It. I'm just reading this like y'all can see that. That should be better. I'll zoom in a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. This is Proverbs 16, verse 9 in the KJV. is a man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. And that goes into what I said before. From our vantage point, we devise, oh, I want to take this path in life, take this path in life and do this. And we've all been through that. We made plans, but the Lord has other plans. <laughs> We all know that even our parents, that's even a proverb with our parents. We make plans the Lord and the Lord and the Lord goes by his own plan, man. If it's not, if it's not in his will for you to do a certain thing, you're not going to do it. It doesn't matter how powerful you are, it doesn't matter even at your best, you know, your limited ability as man, even at your best, you cannot go against the Lord's plan. It's impossible. You can't do it. And let me read this in the NIV. It says, in their hearts, humans plan their course, like in our hearts is our mind, plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. The Lord establishes our steps. It says the same thing over and over again. We, uh, the, the NLT, we, uh, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Look at the, the English Standard Version. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes steps. What is that? Eskimo Duris, Barakata, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, man. Barakata to you, man, and for your gracious donation. But back to what I was saying is we we make our plans. We say, oh, I'm gonna go to, I'm about to go to when I finish high school, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna finish high school with a 4.0, go to college, get a 4.0, 
get a degree, work for this job, and do all this. But the Lord can have it to where you don't even finish high school. Or even if you finish high school, you, you, you get a 2.0, go to college, get a 3.0. It, or if you even finish college, stuff can just happen. Life just happens. That life just happening is the Lord. That's the Lord's doing. That's his plan that he has for us. We can't circumvent that. We're not power, we're not powerful enough to circumvent that. And with that, with that already, with that mentality in your head, you can kind of grasp the fact that, like, okay, if you don't have any free will, that must mean the people who are who are wicked or, or going to die, the Lord made them that way. That's the only logical dedu deduction you can make out of that. That literally is the only logical deduction you can make. If we don't have any free will, he already chose people to be wicked. It says it that's honor the first verse I'm gonna get to when we get to that section. So I break I break my precepts into sections. But when we get to that section, that's really the first verse I'm gonna go to. So let's go to Job chapter 33. I don't think I need that in another translation. Let me just go to Job 33, verse 15. So let's see how he deals with this, how he, how he chooses people and gives people their instruction, whether it be for them to be wicked or whether for them to be righteous. This is Job 33, verse 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumberings upon the bed, then he... Oh, can y'all see this? Let me hold up. I remember they said that. <laughs> I don't get having it zoomed in enough. I think I think y'all can see that. I'm going to read it again verse from verse 15. It's in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men and the slumberings upon the bed, he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. That's how the Lord works. He sealed, like, and when you're sleeping or when you go in, in the process of life, he sealeth your instruction. Whether, whether for you to be wicked, whether for you to be righteous. That's how the Lord deals with us. That's how the Lord chooses us for certain things. People are chosen to be wicked. Some people are chosen to be righteous. That's how the Lord deals. You see it all through the scriptures. All through the scriptures, man. And with the precepts I already brought up before this, that's the only logical deduction you can make. Outside of that, we're just gonna have to just contradict scripture. It, it, honestly, that's I mean that's that's the that's the end of it. You're gonna have to just contradict scripture if we, if we are free will, or we can just choose to this. Like you saying that is saying you're honestly, to be honest, you saying that is saying you're more powerful than the Lord. You're more powerful than than the instruction that he gave than he gave you. You could just now circumvent that or overpower that when you ultimately can't even at your best, like it says in the Amplified Version of, of Proverbs 16. So let's go into how it deals with the wicked. Second Peter's 2. I've been on my predestination kick for a minute now. I'm going to pivot topics after this, but I, I had to get this lesson out. Uh, Second Peter's 2. Is it 12? Oh, I'm in first Peter's. I'm tripping. Okay, right. We brought this out. I think we brought this out a couple classes ago. It says uh second Peter 2, verse 12. It said, But these as natural brute beasts, not remember that, not because we're gonna come back to it. Natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not. And shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Now, who, 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 what is this? What is this talking about? The natural brute, brute beasts in this context are people who don't receive the things of the Lord, who don't receive the correction or the chastening or the refinement of the Lord. That's who the natural brute, brute beasts are. Even throughout Scripture, it refers to people as beasts. Just like in Ezekiel chapter thirty-four, where it talks about he's going to root the evil beasts out of the land, and then later in the chapter, it, it shows you. Matter of fact, let me just go to that real quick. Let me just go to that real quick. Ezekiel uh, 34. Let me just prove what I'm talking about. Uh, we can't meet the people. I can zoom in like this. I can't see nothing. I'll zoom back in when I find it. Yeah, I'll go to a piece of them. 
Yeah, Ezekiel, Ezekiel. Where do I want to start at? I kind of want to start at the beginning. Okay, Ezekiel 34, verse 23. It says, I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. We know that's Christ. That's talking about salvation time period. When we're brought back into our land, their whole restoration of Israel, and then Yahweh shines over us underneath Yahweh. Now, it says, And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them. And he shall be their shepherd, just like in John, where it says he's going to be the good shepherd. It says, and I, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land. Cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land. That's not talking about animals. And, and honestly, the context proves it. Here and later, because it says, and they shall dwell safely. Who's it? They, Israel. So what are the evil beasts that's terrorizing us? The other nations, which is, this is ultimately the fulfillment of Luke chapter one, where we should be saved from our enemies and all the hand of all that, that hate us. That's what this is talking about. Those are the evil beasts. People are symbolized as beasts in the Bible in certain instances. That's how we know in first, in second Peter's chapter two, that the beast there is talking about people. That's why it's that natural root beast, which we're going to go back into later. But I want to show this example of beast being people. It says, and uh, let me read that again. I'm going to keep going. It said, I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And let me just jump to the point. I'm going to read it down there. No, I'm going to keep reading because the point, the point is in 28. It says, uh, verse 27, and the tree, the tree of the field shall yield her fruit. That's talking about us. And the earth, and oh no, no, that's not talking about that's talking about the world just in general being renewed and us at the same time. This and the earth shall uh yield its inc yield her increase, and they shall be safe in their land, and shall know that I am the Lord when I broken the bands of their yoke, save them from captivity, is and deliver them out of the hand of those that serve serve themselves of them, slavery. And it says, and they shall no more be uh, be a prey to the heathen. They shall no more be a prey to the heathen. These are the evil beasts it's talking about. People are similitude, uh, made similitude to beasts in the Bible. This is one example. And it says, and they shall be no more, uh, they shall, and they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beast of the land devour them. Proof right there. The beasts of the land devour them, but they they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. The same thing is said right here. I'll cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness. Where is that? Uh, and none shall make them afraid. That's pretty much the point, right? And so let me get let me get the, let me set this precept real set this precept up real fast. Verse fourteen. Now. If we know beasts are people, especially in, especially in this context, it says natural brute beasts. What are the natural brute beasts? What does natural mean in this context? These are talking about the people who haven't been born again. The regular human fleshly being person who goes after their lust and, and only go only can see the, only can see their lust. They go through lives, they go through their lives with blinders on their eyes, just serving their own diverse lust. That's what these people are. Now, look at this. This is to prove what I'm talking about. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14. This is, but the natural man, see, we see it again. The natural man, the natural the natural brute beast, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. What's the things of the Spirit of God? The Bible in its totality, the laws, the faith, Christ, the, the apostles, the, uh, the epistles, the uh, prophetic books, the, the books of wisdom, the poetic books, all of this. They can't receive that. The only thing they can receive is fleshly things. It says that it says that, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. What does that mean? They're spiritually turned away from it. They're spiritually like they 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 can't receive it because they are the natural man, they are the natural brute brute beast 
made to be taken and to be destroyed. The Lord already, already put it in them to be destroyed. So they're not going to they're not going to be able to retain the things of the Lord. It's impossible for them to do. Now, when I, going back to what I was saying before about how they mind the things of the flesh, Paul echoes that in Romans eight, eight verse. Yeah, uh, Romans eight verse five. Is for they that are after the flesh, they that are after the flesh are the natural men, the people who can't receive the things of God or the non born, the not currently born again people. Because before, before we were born again, we were like that. But since the Lord, since the Lord saw fit to bring us out of that, we became the spiritual men. But there are certain people who are made to be taken and be destroyed, who are made to only be the natural men. And these are the people who mind the things of the flesh. Now, look at this is for they. For they that are after this flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, be the natural man, the fleshly man, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, what does spiritually minded mean? So here come the dang the Russians again, man. <laughs> what is it? What does it mean to be spiritually minded? Now, Paul talks about what it means to be spiritual. In Romans, uh, honestly, the chapter before this, Romans chapter seven, the law makes us spiritual. Christ tells, uh, tells us another way to be spiritual, listening to the words he says in, in John chapter six, the words he speak unto us, their life and their spirit. That's what quicken us and changes us to be, to, to change from the, from the uh, natural man or change from the fleshly minded man to the spiritual man. But everybody isn't like that. Some people are just made to just be that. Some people are just made to be the unrefined person, <laughs> the untempered mortar, the, the the people who are just meant to be just taken to be destroyed. And we're gonna get we're gonna get that understanding when we go right back to Second Peter's. But I want to finish this out because it's because Christians and I like this. <laughs> Verse seven: It's because the carnal mind is enmity against God or hatred against God, for it is not subject subject to the law of God. Neither neither indeed can be. The people who are the people who are spiritually discerned away from this, the natural man, the natural brute beast, are the people who cannot be subject to the law of God. So the Christian is telling people the law is done away with. You're making people not subject to the law of God. You're breaking what, what Paul, what not Paul, what Christ taught, what, what Christ taught in Matthew chapter five about teaching people to break these the least of the commandments. That's why that's why I bang against Christianity so hard because that's that's one thing that's killing us. I talk about this all the time in Tobit chapter 12, verse 10. Though, uh, the, uh, when you sin, you make yourself an enemy to your own life. You're making people enemies to your own life when you say that the law is done away with. Tell me, you're making enemies to their own life when you tell them that the law is done away with. You're, you're, you're a murderer, to be honest. And you know, no murderers have, have no eternal life abiding in them. That's why Christians don't have eternal life abiding in them. That's why they don't have the spirit like that. Because they're not subject to the law of God. That's why I bang against that. That's why I bang against that as hard as I do, because that's the that's the one main thing that's keeping our people down for the most part. It's making our people docile, believing in doctrines that are false, monsters, hypocrites. Everything that Christ, everything that Christ got on the Pharisees about, because he he didn't get on them about keeping. He didn't get on them specifically about oh y'all are not keeping the law. It's, it's, it's more well actually yeah he did. I mean as far as like they they were being hypocrites about. It. Just like our Christians will go up on the pulpits and say, uh, we need to stop sinning, but don't tell people what sin is. They need, uh, you need they tell people to stop sinning, but say the law is done away with. Then what is sin? You see what I mean? Like things like that, things like that are problematic. Problematic. That's why I come against that as hard as I possibly do. I mean, as, as hard as I possibly can. So the whole reason I brought that up, especially verse seven, when it says like it's not subject to God, these are the natural brute beast. These are the natural men, right? So let's go back to Second Peter, knowing that already. It's, but these, as natural brute beasts, are made to be taken and, and uh, taken and destroyed. Made to be taken and destroyed. Now we go the uh, we go to the word made in the Greek. It's the same Greek word for begotten. The same word to be created, born. Like how you begot a son, you created a son, 
They were made to be created and to be destroyed. These are the people who were made, who were born in vain, like it says in 2nd Ezra. Now, let's look at this. This is made, right? It gets translated as of, of men who father children to be born, to be begotten, a woman giving birth to children. That's what this means. It's even translated 49 times in the Bible as beget. So these people, these natural root beasts, these natural men who, who won't receive the things of God, the, the, who won't receive the things of God are made to be that way. They won't be refined. They will be untempered mortar. They will be, they will be people who sway back and forth into, into different things because they can't be rooted in this because the Lord made them to be that way. And we don't have no free will. So if he puts that on you, that's who you are. That's the thing. That's that's what the Bible teaches. And it says, I'm gonna keep going. It says, speak evil of things that they understand not and shall uh, shall utterly perish or die in their own corruption. Just like how just like how you try to come up against come up and tell people and Christians about the Bible and it, and its authenticity and what it, what it me really means and what it's alluding to as far as Israel's salvation. We got to keep the law. Got to keep the true faith of. Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, all those things. And then they and then they they just can't receive it. No matter how many Bible verses you hit them with, they still can't receive it. They speak evil of things that they can't, that they understand not. They tell you you're wrong. You're in a cult. I, 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 I love that one's fun. I, I love that one. That one's hilarious to me. Oh, you're in a cult. Christianity is the most like if you want to go by the, the nowadays term of cult, that's the most cultish thing on the planet, on the planet. That is the most cultish thing on the planet, bro. You get people do this ritual called communion every every damn uh, what was that what was that once a month? Where's that in the Bible? A cult they do they do occultic things all the time. You can't ask questions. You can't you can't you can't question what the pastor says. You can't do that. You have to sit there and take that. But we're in a cult though. The same people who answer questions, but we're in a cult though. The same people whose doctrine is up for debate every week and on the classes, but we're in a, we're in a cult. That's hilarious, man. And let me get a, let me get a precept for that too. While while we're at it, let's see what is going on right here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's call it cult. So. Oh, shit. Let me see. That's uh, I love when people say this is a cult, bro. This is uh, that that'd be so funny to me. Let's see. I think that's let me let me just look at this in the Bible. Hub. Which one is it? Yeah. This is Paul. This is Paul saying, "It says, but I admit that I follow the way which they call a cult. I I worship the God of our ancestors. Who the God of our ancestors? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the same thing we worship. And they call us a, they call us cult members. And that's the same thing. That's the same thing they were doing to Paul. It's but uh, uh, but I admit that I follow the way which they call a cult. I worship the God of our ancestors." And I firmly believe the Jewish law, which is the, the, the law of God, and everything written in the prophets. And ain't that what the Israelites believe in? Don't we believe we have to keep the law, statutes, and commandments of God? Don't we believe in our prophets where it talks about the restoration of us, the subjection of the, the, the other nations, us being the hegemony of the earth? Don't we believe in that? But we're cult members. That, 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 you see what I mean? Like, like. It's funny when they'll say stuff like that, and then here comes a Bible verse. That's why I love the Lord so much. Because no matter what scoffers say, no matter what people like to say against us, but they want to call us a cult and stuff like that, there's always a Bible verse cutting them. And, and all praise to the Most High God, man. Barakatha, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, man. But there's always a Bible verse cutting these scoffers and shutting their dang mouth, bro, because they don't know nothing. And they speak evil of things that they don't understand. Why? Because they were spiritually discerned away from it. And it all comes circling back to what I was saying in the very beginning. Like, I love the, that's why I love the Lord, bro. 
He's such a benevolent, such a benevolent power. Now, where was I at? So let me get this in Second Thessalonians. Two. Now, since we know people, he said, I'd be honored to be called the cult member. For, let's see. It says, I'd be honored to be called a cult member for being in the truth. <laughs> exactly. I, I'll be honored. People say we brainwashed. They said, we, we, I, I would love to be, if, 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 if worshiping the God of our fathers, our ancestors, our, our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and keeping these laws makes me brainwashed. I love being brainwashed. Let's just say it like that. I love it, bro. And I will say that I will say that as many times as I need to say it, bro. If I if, if what I'm doing is if what I'm doing is being brainwashed, I love being brainwashed. Then go ahead and clip it, bro. I don't give a damn. I'll say it. I don't I don't even care. And the reason why and the reason why they'll say things like that is because they've been sent a lie. They've already been damned, they've already been chosen to be the people who shall perish in their own corruption. So the Lord sends them a lie. And let's get that in the scriptures. It says 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10. It says, and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness and them that perish, who's them that perish? Those are going, those people who are not going to be saved, the people who are going to die, the people who are not going to be reserved, the people who want to call us brainwashed, the people who want to call us cult members, right? That's these people. Right. This is and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness and them that perish because they received not the love of the truth. Why didn't they receive it? Because the natural man can't receive the things of the Lord. That's first Corinthians chapter two, verse 14, which we brought out already. So it says because they received not the love of the truth that they may be saved. And for this cause, God shall, and for this cause, God, who did it? God. Yahweh in heavens, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That now we're putting hate in people's hearts. Oh, I've never, I've never felt so much hate in my heart. Like, <laughs> like, 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 oh, we're brainwashed. We're cult members. We're evil. We're not of God. We're not saved. We're not baptized of God. Y'all been sent that strong delusion because the Lord did not choose you. And matter of fact, scratch that. The Lord chose you to be wicked. He chose you to die. You're going to be wonderfully destroyed, man. And we all know people like this, we, we, whether it be our family members or whether it be our friends, whether it be people we see who we try to in, uh, try to uh, endow this truth unto. Y'all going to be, you're going to be wonderfully destroyed. And Barack, I thought you how it's for it, man. It's all, all praises, right? So, I'm going to read it again. It says, for this cause, God, the most high God, shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned. Who is, what does damn mean? Mark for destruction. Damned. Who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And that's the same people who have pleasure in unrighteousness. Oh, I ain't got to do all that. Lord, Lord, Lord said in Acts 10, I can eat pork. He said, he said all that. He said all that. He said, like, see, y'all, y'all, he realized, right? You Hebrew Israelites, y'all, 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 y'all fumble on the on what 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 the Lord was trying to show you in Acts ten. See Acts ten, the Lord sent down chitlins, pork chops, bacon, shrimp, and lobster down to to, to, to Peter, and he said, "Kill and eat it." That's what that's what, I, I've heard that before. That's a breakdown I've heard, man. That's what they do. And they say like, well, and the same dude in that video I, I put up with the wacky tacky Christian. He said he, he says uh. He said, well, y'all cannot eat that, but I'm, I'm going to go and eat me this pork. I'm going to love this pork. You have pleasure and unrighteousness, man. You're going to be damned. You you're, you probably already are damned. Like, that's how Christians act, bro. That, that's that's how evil they are, bro. That, that's that's something that's just crazy. It's, that's nutso to me, man. <laughs> that's, 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 that's bonkers, bro. Because, like, you will read up, like, bro. And honestly, if you go back and watch all them videos, you go back and watch all three of them videos with that that, that Antoine guy. We uh we we pretty much, I would say debated, but it, it just it just let me take that screen. It just went in one ear and out the other. But we went, read all the scriptures about the people who are going to eat pork are going to get put to death. You see that in Isaiah. 
You see that in Amos, where it said the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. You see so many scriptures. Hell, uh, you even read Romans 6, verse 23. The wages of sin are death. Did not care. Say, I'm going to still eat the pork. Why? Because this is you. Like the Bible gets made, the, the Bible gets, it's is such a living, it's such living waters to the point to where you can see it, bro. We have like everything I'm saying right now, out of this book right here, you can watch them three videos right now. And let me just, let me put it on the screen. Wait, let me put it on the screen, man. Where is it at? These videos right here. Watch these. This is what I'm talking about. This is this is when you when the Lord sent you a strong delusion. Wacky Tacky Christian finds out what is this one? Finds out uh finds out he got touched by the unholy ghost. Christian continues to get lacerated by the uh by the prophets. Christian gets pummeled, uh pummeled by body blows and still hates the Bible. So Christ fulfilled the law so you can be a monster. All watch all us four of these, all four of these. You'll see a perfect example of what I'm talking about. People are chosen to be off, bro. Some people are chosen to be damned. And there's nothing me, you, even the, the Bible, uh, get, shoot, hitting them upside the head, the Bible can do. The Lord chose them to be that way, man. And 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 we should pray that that spirit don't ever come upon us, bro, because it can. The Lord can do that to you. The Lord can do that to you. So you should pray that that doesn't happen to you. So back to what I was saying. Let me just get that off. That eats up my bandwidth. Right? These people, man, they should, they'll be sent a strong illusion that they shall believe a lie. He said, what did y'all son say? Unfortunately, the two-thirds got to go. They got to go, man. Uh, and I said, I'll, I'll do you one better, right? I'll do you one better. He says, unfortunately, the two-thirds got to go. But fortunately, that the two-thirds ancient forefather is Abraham to where they can be reborn in the kingdom after they know their death by pain. Fortunately, fortunately, you're not going to get casted off, man. I mean, as far as like, as far as like forever speaking, they'll come back, but they got to die first. They got to know that punishment. That's second Ezra. But they're going to be sent lies. And even the, pro and you see in the Bible, right, where the Lord, when the Lord has rejected somebody and doesn't want them and wants them to die, right? The people who are, who are supposed to perish, the Lord will send a strong delusion and lie to them. And we also see an example in Kings where uh, King Ahab was sent lying prophets unto him so he should die. Let me turn out. God, it's hot in here. Okay. All right. This is 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 19. And he said, Hear thou, therefore, the word of the Lord, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him and on his right hand and on his left. It's going into the left-handed, the left-handed uh, evil demons or for evil purpose and the right-handed demons for a righteous purpose. Verse 20, verse 20, it says, and the Lord said, who shall persuade, remember this, persuade Ahab. And that's what he does. That's, that's, that's how the Lord operates. Right now, knowing that we don't have free will, the Lord, the Lord, for his purpose, will persuade you to pick a side. If he wants you to be on the side or left handed side of destruction and to perish. Right. He will persuade you into doing something off and being wicked and getting put to death, ultimately for your destruction. Now, for on the right handed side, for you to be righteous, the Lord will persuade you to come into this truth persuade you to know that you're an Israelite, persuade you to, to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, persuade you to be a better Israelite. That's how he operates. He's not about to just hop up off his throne. Shalom, Rob. He's not about to hop up off his throne and do all that. He's going to send He's gonna send delusions upon you. He's going to send lies upon you. Even Isaiah says, I choose, I choose your delusions. And what, that's going into not having free will. If the Lord is choosing your delusions, you do not have free will. If the Lord chose you to chose you to be to perish to die, you do not have free will. 
Like that's that's something that's that's something that should should be simple in the Bible, but for some reason everybody wants to debate it. Like that's I don't I don't understand that. Like you take away the sovereignty and authority and power of God when you say we have free will, and people don't understand that. It's it's honestly disrespectful. Honestly, right now let's go back into Ahab being persuaded. Is that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. And he said on this manner, and uh, uh, wait, 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 and one said on this manner, and another said on that manner, and there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, "I will persuade him." The spirits let persuade. I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, "Wherewith? How are you going to persuade Ahab?" And it says, "And he said, I will go forth." And I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. That's how the Lord operates. This is the holy divine counsel that you see in the Bible. You see this also in Job. Now, for you to either fall or, or be saved in a certain situation, the Lord will persuade you or persuade situation to put you in a position to either for either for your good or for your destruction. And in this case, it's for your destruction. In in Kings chapter 22, that's how the Lord operates. He uses his spirits, his divine counsel to do that. We don't have free will, man. Some people are chosen to be destroyed. Some people aren't chosen to be destroyed. It says, now therefore, now therefore, now watch this. This is another point I want to say. Uh, now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all, uh, all these, all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. The Lord does this, man. The Lord's still getting the credit for it. The, an the, the angel said, I'm going to do it this way. And the Lord said, go ahead and do it. And he co-signs on it. And now the Lord's getting the credit for it. Just like how you have a name of a building, just like how you have a name of a, of, of a building, right? And the person, the person whose whose name is on the building, that's not the person who built it, but that's the person who financed it, who had the, who uh, financed for the architect to to plan it to build it, who paid for the laborers to build it, and to do all those things, all the logistics for it, and then ultimately, who gets the credit? The person whose name is on the building. In the same fashion, the the uh, divine council works, and in, in that in that same fashion, the divine council works, whether it be for your destruction or for your ultimate salvation. Now, let's look at this. This is Jeremiah. I want to read this in other translation. Jeremiah. 6 verse 29 because like i was saying before i alluded to this earlier because i was really going back to this verse so the people who who are ultimately going to receive that lie who have been rejected of the lord who will not be refined that's a reference to this verse some people like like i said before you can beat people over the, who you can beat people over the head with this all day long but if the lord has rejected them they're not going to be refined they're not going to knock off that tin off of them. And tin is, in regards to silver, is impurities. Now watch this. What do I want to read this in? Uh, I don't like that translation. Let's see. I'm just going to read a few translations. Uh, I think I just need the NIV and the NLT. It says, the bellows have blowed fiercely to burn away the lead with fire. Like refining, and it says, but the, the refining goes on in vain. The wicked are not purged out. It's in LT, the bellows, uh, the bellows fiercely fan the flames to burn out the corruption, but but it does not purify them, for the wickedness remains. Like all these things that it's talking about refining. Just like how just like how metal is refined. Now, when metal is refined or ore is refined, you throw it in the in the uh and the refiner and the impurities are supposed to be taken off of it through the fire and the flame. <laughs> through the fire and the flames. <laughs> Shout out to people who know about that. But uh, that's a good tower thing. But <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be refined and the impurities are supposed to fall off of it. But this is saying 
this ore is going in there, and if the tin is not falling off of this silver, it's not. It's, it's talking about the people who were reprobate, the people who were rejected of the Lord. Now watch this. Let's look at the next verse. Verse 9, uh, not verse 9. <laughs> I said nine. The uh, the Jeremiah six verse thirty in the NIV it says they they are called rejected silver. This is the the ore that hasn't been that hasn't been uh, that hasn't had the impurities taken off of it through the refining process. And and how do we how do we make that as an analogy for us? This is the refiner for those in this truth and practicing in this truth. They've been refined and tried by this. Now, for the people in the world or the natural man who's not going to get it, when this, when they're tried by this, they're going to fail every single time. They're going to go another way. They're going to be spiritually discerned away from this. That's who the Lord has rejected. That's why it says they, they are called rejected silver because the Lord has rejected them. I will label them rejected silver for I, the Lord, uh, uh, am discarding them. What's another one? Reprobate silver, that's KJV, rep, reprobate silver shall men call them because the Lord have rejected them. They will not, they will not be refined. There are certain people in this truth, well, not well, certain people in the world, as far as Israelites, when I mean cosmos, the Israelites, there are certain people in the cosmos who will not be refined. They're not going to be. No matter what you, no matter what you say, no matter how many, no matter how eloquent you are with the scriptures, no matter how good your breakdown are, no matter how long you've been in this truth, there's certain people who the Lord has rejected. They will not be refined because the Lord made them that way. That's why He says the Lord has rejected them. The Lord has rejected them. That's why. That's why in in First Thessalonians, I believe it's First Thessalonians four. Let me read it. First Thessalonians, what in Timothy? Yeah, First Thessalonians 4, verse 8. He therefore that despiseth, despises not men, despises not man, but God, who, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. So when people come up against us or against you, when you try to teach people, right? When you, when, when you try to teach people, if they come up against you and despise you, they don't despise you. They despise God. Why? Because God had rejected them. That's why they do that. They will not be refined because the Lord has rejected them. Now, let's go. Let me look at that in the Hebrew real fast. Reprobate. It means to reject, despite, uh, despise, refuse. It says to reject, to refuse, to despise, to be rejected. That's what that's what the Lord does to people, man. He's rejected to them. That could be people. That could be people. Like they'll get their phone, right? They'll get their phone, man. So you got to, you got to get that Android, man. That's it's better than the Apple phones. I, I, I'm just gonna throw that out there, man. Apple phones, man. I, I don't know. I don't know what y'all doing with y'all life, but <laughs> you got to get that good flagship Android phone, man. So I'm back to what I was saying is the rejected people. They can, they can get on their phone and call God, but God's not picking it up, bro. He's not picking it up. He, like, the, the, he's literally not about to pick up the phone for these people. That's why they won't be refined. And the people who the Lord picks the answer, uh, the, the people who uh, answers the call of the Lord, that's the people who are going to be refined, man. Now, let me get this one. This is and this is also why they they're not they won't be able to. They won't be able to examine themselves. That refining process, the refining process is being an Israelite comes with examining yourself and examining your sins. Because what did it say in Titus? We were once, uh, we was, uh, we were, let me read that real fast. I want to make that point because it's imperative to this. Uh, Titus 3. Yeah, Titus 3, verse 3. It says, for, uh, for we ourselves, also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Now, how did we change from that? We, we since the Lord answered the call and chose us to bring us out of this world, we, <laughs> uh, we can examine ourselves and refine ourselves through the scriptures. Now, people who can't do that are reprobate. That's why it says in verse uh, verse 5 in, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, it says, examine yourselves 
whether you be in the faith, prove your, your own selves, proving, and, and another similar to for proving is refining. Because when you go when you go into refining ore and metal, it's the proving process, the trying process. It's the same thing. It's synonymous. Anybody can go into, into looking at it, re refining things, right? So it says, prove your own selves. Know ye not that your own selves, uh, know ye not your own selves, because behind closed doors, we know how we are. So we can try ourselves according to these scriptures. We know what specifically what we are going off on. I know what God is going off on. And I can try that and test it through these scriptures, right? And it says how that Yahweh Shai Mashiach is in you, except ye be reprobates. Reprobates can't do that. It's impossible. And, and, and you always you always see that that uh you always see that that personality trait with people who can't take rebuke. If they, if they can't take rebuke from you, they damn sure you're not taking rebuke from the Lord. It's not you like it, that, both of those things can exist at the same time. That's also, and I'm gonna go into a lesson on that about the people who who uh, who talk to who talk about camps, really camp haters. Now, these are the people who can't take rebuke, take correction. That's what being humble is. Being humble means you can take correction and you don't bash your head up against it. You don't try to run up and just be like, oh, oh no, you really, maybe, maybe or maybe it could be this. No, you take rebuke. That people who people who take rebuke can refine themselves. That's why it says. Uh, that's why it says iron sharpeneth iron. You can't. How can you? How can iron sharpen iron if you can't take rebuke? How can you be then sharpened if you are not being tested or rebuked? Because the rebuke process either comes with another person or with these scriptures. These scriptures are rebuke. What is rebuke going to correct? You're correcting yourself through these scriptures because, like I Titus said, we were sometimes foolish. Now we're not through this. Come. It says, except you be reprobates, right? Because repro reprobates can't do that. So, I mean, that's that's pretty much it on that part as far as the people who have been rejected. Now, for the people who've been chosen, let me get some precepts on that. And when I mean chosen, I mean chosen for the righteous, for the righteous way, not to be rejected, not chosen or selected to be rejected, but people who have been selected to be accepted of the Lord. And that accept and, and when you are accepted of the Lord, the Lord persuades you by showing you signs to give you a reason to believe in Him in the correct fashion. Whether it be Deuteronomy 28, whether it be somebody on the streets, whether it be a video, He does all those things. And all those signs you see to persuade you into being in the truth, that's that calling. With all those things we're going to talk about, all, every one of them things we're going to just key in on and talk about. Now, let's look at this. This is John. Uh, where do I want to start at? John 10 and 25. Let's just start there. Uh, is that what I want? I'm just going to read it. Go ahead. This is uh, John 10, verse 25. It says, Yahweh shall answer them, I told you, and ye believe not the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. And honestly, Right, that that's kind of going to what I'm going to talk about. Uh, talk about later, later in a few verses where it talks about the Yahweh. Which I well, really Yahweh gives us a reason to believe in Him. He shows us signs and wonders to believe to believe in Him. Hiccups. <laughs> it says they bear witness of me, just like how Yahweh the, the way we knew Yahweh was of the Lord. The Lord gave Him power to do these miracles that He did. It says, but ye believe not, because ye are not are not of my sheep. As I say unto you, and what and what is that alluding back to? The people who've been who spiritually discerned away from it. You're going to believe this or be persuaded to believe in this through the signs that He shows you. If you're chosen for, if you're chosen to be accepted of the Lord, and it says, "My sheep hear My voice." That's the accepted. Yahweh Shai sheep hears His voice. Hears His hears His voice. What does it mean by hear His voice? You're going to follow after His steps and follow after His works. And those people who do that are going to have power over the nations, like it says in Revelation chapter 2. Keepeth his works until the end. You follow him whithersoever he goeth. It says, my sheep hear, hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. 
and I uh, and I will give unto them eternal life. The people who are going to the people who are not going to die, the people who are going to be saved and brought and, and be the first fruits into the kingdom, the people who are chosen to be accepted. I will give unto them eternal life, and and they shall never perish. And who is the ones who are and this and this this, this perish doesn't mean like you're not going to just die in this this time period. Perish is talking about the people who were meant to be the two thirds. We already established that through the precepts uh, afor aforehand. Now, furthermore, now when he says they shall never perish, that's the people who have chosen to be accepted. They shall uh, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. What is pluck them out of my hand? They won't fall out of this truth because they're chosen to be accepted of the Lord. It says, "My Father, which gave them me, because the Father, the Father already has his already chosen elect and gave them to Yahushai from the inception of the, of the for, for, before the inception of the world." To be honest, and there's scriptures on that too, which we can get. It says, my father, my father, which gave them me is before uh, is greater than all, which cuts the Trinity because the father is greater than the son. The Trinity or the hypostatic union, they're, they're, they're all co-eternal, co-equal. They can't be co-equal if one's greater than the other. That's a Trinity cut. It says greater than all. And no man, no man is able to pluck them out of my, out of my father's hand. Nobody can pluck them out of my father's. Nobody can pluck them out of out of the Lord's hand. If the Lord set up the elect, nobody can nobody can 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 make them turn into into being the rejected. Nobody can turn them into being the uh, uh, outside of the elect. The Lord already has his elect, and they will follow Yahweh where whithersoever he goeth. He's that good shepherd who will lead and restore the fold, and the restored of the fold, the ones going to be following him, who's going to get that eternal life. Now. Let me get uh, John 6. Ooh, a lot of John verses today, tonight rather. John 6, verse 44. It says, uh, no man can come to me except, except the Father. And, and, then, and honestly, before I read this, right, this is a cut on Christians say, oh, you got to come to Jesus. Oh, everybody, you got to accept Jesus inside inside your heart. And it's like, what verse says that? Beyond, like, like. That's another thing. I, I hate to like. I, I don't want to go off a tangent on this. I'm already going to the point, but I gotta say this. What verse says that? Damn it! I'm just saying. Like, like, oh, we gotta set Christ in your heart, and now you're you already saved. Like that don't make no sense. That's just dumb. And this verse cuts that. Watch. Right, so I'm gonna read it. It says, "No man can come to me except the Father, which uh, the uh, uh, slack it. No man can come to me except the Father, which have sent me." Draw him, and I will raise him up, the person who the Lord draws to him at the last day. You have to be drawn unto the Lord. What does that drawn unto the Lord mean? Chosen out of this world, man, to be accepted of him and to follow Yahweh Shai, to be conformed to the image of the Son. You have to be drawn out of this world, bro, because this world is set up in wickedness. Babylon, the great America, everything it stands on is wickedness. Everything is contrary to the Lord here. And we have to be pulled out of this. That's, that's why it says in, in Revelation 18, come out of her, my people. That's what this is talking about. It's not talking about leaving Babylon. It's talking about leaving Babylon in, 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 in a mental and a spiritual state. That's what this is talking about. Because Micah 4 says we're going to be saved from Babylon. So ultimately, we can't, we can't will ourselves into being this truth. The Lord has to draw us into this truth. The Lord has to choose us to be in this truth, to follow him. Now, let me get this in John 10. Or is it John 15? Oh, John 15. Lots of precepts. Is, <laughs> is that what you say? That's an awful lot of precepts. This, is a, this, this class is an awful lot of precepts. This is, uh, this is John chapter 15, verse 16. It says, ye have not chosen me. This is Christ when you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. We don't choose him. We can't accept him. He has to draw us to him. He has to choose us to, to be pulled out of this world. It says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that, and that your fruit should remain should remain, was that remain, keeping the works until the end. Your fruit shall remain, that whatsoever ye ask, ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you, right? 
But that's not the, the last part is the part I, I, I'm not talking about that specifically. I'm talking about how he's chosen and ordained us so that we bring forth fruit. Now, when we're out there on the streets or, or when you first came into this truth, a seed was planted of a various fruit. Let's just say apple, apple fruit, right? Uh, apple, just apple, right? It's a fruit. The seed was planted into you and the Lord gave that increase. And what came out of that? It grew into fruit. In the similitude of in the similitude of we heard that we were Israelites, our faith came by hearing. We started walking after him and then showing fruits of our repentance. Our fruit will come in due season, like it says in Psalms. So whatsoever we do, it shall prosper. And I got a lesson coming on that too. So what it's saying is we'll we'll walk after this, we'll walk after these commandments, and we'll walk after the faith because the Lord watered that seed, because he chosen you. He told you water that seed shall grow as it shall remain until the end. You will keep the works until the end. And we see that we see we see keeping the commandments is and, and repentance similar to two fruits in various parts. In the Bible. Like, let's give an example. We'll come right back to this. Matthew 3, verse 6. It's not 3, verse 6. I'll tell you. In yeah, yeah, this is Matthew 3, verse 8. It says, bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. Fruits meet for repentance. Things that grow up out of that. Just to, to show that you've repented, your works and your actions. This also cuts people who say you don't have to keep works. So if you look at the Greek for fruits here, I'm waiting for, I've been waiting to pull this out on a Christian. It says like the fruit, right? It says fruit of trees. Now, figuratively, it says work, act, deed. Show your works of repentance. What's your works? You keeping the laws. You keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Lord, man. This cuts, this literally cuts the saying you don't, you don't have to have no works. It says bring forth fruits, meat, uh, fruits, meat for repentance. The Greek word for fruit here either means a literal fruit or somebody's or somebody's son or daughter. Or figuratively, a worked act deed advantage profit utility. These are works or actions. This is a cut on this is a heavy cut, a honestly, a technical cut on Christians that I haven't even got to use yet. I want to. So we see that the fruits, we see that the fruits that, that's gonna that's gonna remain in us are us keeping that, that made me think of a whole nother precept. Oh, it's an awful lot of precepts, precepts tonight, man. It's an awful lot of precepts. It says, this is 2nd Ezra 9, verse 31. For behold, I sow my law in you. What is so? Like you sow seeds. Like how I said the seed was planted in us. I will sow my law in you, and it shall bring fruit in you. And ye shall be honored in it forever. Why? Because the people, let's go back to why. Let's go back to why. Let's prove it. Let's go back to why I should be honored in you forever. It says, I'm going to read verse John 15, 16 again. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go for go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit shall remain. What does it mean, remain? The fruit shall remain, meaning that you will keep this fruit until the end and you shall see salvation. And you'll be honored in it forever. Why? Because you'll be that you'll be the Israelite that made it on the first round. The first go around. And that's the and the people who are going to do that, the people who the Lord's, the people who the Lord uh who's the, the people whose seed is going to be watered by the Lord is the people who the Lord chose. That's not happening to the rejected people. The rejected people seeds getting cast by the wayside, like it says in Mark and various other gospels. That's not happening to everybody. Everybody has a set lots, bro. Everybody has a set lot. Even Daniel in the last very, the last, like I said, awful, awful lot of precepts. <laughs> and Daniel, the very last, the last verse in Daniel. Daniel 20, uh, 12, verse 13. It says, but go thy way till thy end, uh, till the end be, for thou shalt, thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot. At the end of days, even Daniel, after his death, he's going to have to come back and stand in the same lot that the Lord gave him. We all have a lot, bro. Daniel's lot is to be a righteous prophet. That's his lot. He has to stand in at the end of the days, bro. That's our time period now. 
Daniel's on the scene right now. John, uh, uh, just like we brought out on uh, uh, Mailbag Monday, the uh, John the Revelator has a prophesied before many peoples and nations. Again, he died on all the Patmos, which means he's on on he's he came back he's or coming back in this time period to prophesy now. Because if not, the Lord's going to be a liar. Then everybody has a set lot, bro. Everybody has a position and a role to play. Somebody has to be the like we have an ultimate antagonist, an ultimate antagonist uh, with the Edomites versus us and the other nations. We also have antagonists, uh, antagonists who uh, who are against us who try to keep the law, statutes, and commandments of our own people. Somebody has to be the good guy and somebody has to be the bad guy. This is the Lord's movie, and you can't never forget that. If there's no free will, there's a script already made by the Lord. He wrote somebody to be the bad guys, and he wrote somebody to be the good guys. That's how that's how the Lord works, man. And you can you get that understanding through the through, through the awful lot of precepts that we bring out, man. Now, going back to what I was saying before, is the Lord shows us the way the way the Lord persuade uh, the way the Lord brings us into this truth. He persuades us to come into this truth through the signs that we see, through the calling that He gives us. Right. And the Lord's always done that with Israel. The Lord's always showed us something. The Lord has always done something for us to, to give us reasons to believe in him. Now, let's go in this. This is Esther. Esther, this is 10, verse 9. Oh, yeah, I forgot. That's a freaking element. Oh, there it is. Wow. Man, I'm just going to just read it. I'm just going to just read it. Forget it. I'm just going to read it. I don't even feel like dealing with good Christians. Because a Christian got to do so much, so much to take the dang apocrypha around this. Please ask to kiss Rack. Slack, yeah. There we go. All right, yeah, this is Esther. This is Esther 10, verse 9. Addition to Esther and the Apocrypha. This is, and my nation is this Israel, which cried to God and were saved. For the Lord have saved his people, and the Lord have delivered us from all those evils, and God have wrought signs, and here's the point, God have wrought signs and great wonders, which, ha which have not been done among the Gentiles. Now, these signs and great wonders gives us reasons to believe in him, persuades us into believing in him to persuade us to follow after him in righteousness through his calling that he gives us of the fellowship unto his son. And he's always done that with us, bro. He's always he's always given us a reason to believe in him. Now, let's go to the let's go to Matthew, no, not Matthew. Let's go back to John. John 6. What is this guy? What is James Cool talking about, man? Free will is all that, all that we have. That's why God created Satan and left us up. See, like you, you, you like when you say things like this, you, you, you can't you can't have heard the precepts before this. Like you you can't you can't have heard the precepts before this, man. Uh, I'm gonna keep going. This is what Okay, John 6, verse, verse 28. And it says, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? So we should be on that level to work the works of God, like how you were doing, Yahawashai. Like having that power. Now, look at this. This is verse 29. It says, Yahawashai answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he have sent. You have to believe on him who he have sent. Now, when you look at this, when, uh, let's, uh, actually, let me, let me keep going. Let me go one more verse. Verse 30. 
They said unto him, the other Israelites said unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may believe, that we may see and believe thee? What what doest thou what dost thou work? Right? Because we that's how the Lord's already dealt, always dealt with it. He showed us things to believe in him, to believe in him. And they give an example of that in the next verse. It says, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, also. I mean, also, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. He, who did he do that for? The Israelites. It says, uh, 32, it says, Then Yahweh I said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave, gave you not the bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. The Lord gave the manna. The Lord gave us that to show that He is to show that He exists, to show that He is real, and that He loves us and cares for us, and to persuade persuade us to follow Him. Now, when you look at this, when you look at this word in the Greek for believe, this is that we may believe Him to believe. Pisteo, right? It says it means. To think to be true, to be persuaded of, to believe in something you be persuaded of. What is this guy James Cole talking about? It says the biggest secret we are kept, we are kept from is how to make this scary escape. This is like, bro, come on, man, come on, man, time out. Now you go, now you're going to time out, bro. It's always, it's always a dude who's got some kind of esoteric spiritual breakdown in the comment section. Not today, bro. It says, uh. That Greek word for believe there, it means to 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 think to be true, to be persuaded of, right? And we're persuaded to believe in the Lord through the signs that He shows us, right? And I'm I'm, I'm gonna make some examples of how we how we see that in our time period now, but just right now it says to be persuaded of, to credit, to place confidence in. So what what can you show us to place confidence uh, to play for us to place confidence in you to for you to make it to where we believe in you, right? It says to credit, to have confidence. It says in a moral or religious reference, used in, use in the New Testament of the conviction, conviction, right, and trust to which a man is impelled, impelled. You're impelled to believe or persuaded to believe in by a certain inner and higher uh, provocative in the law of, of soul. It says to trust in Jesus or, uh, or God as able to aid either in obtaining obtaining or in doing something saving faith right this is going to this, like like i said before something being persuaded of through the signs that we see that, that we see now this word is a derivative of the root word uh pistis right here in the greek see right here pistis now when you go into when you look at the outline for biblical usage it means conviction of the truth of anything it's a belief in the new testament or uh in the New Testament of a conviction or belief respecting man's relationship to God and divine things, generally with the included idea of trust and of holy fervor, or like you can say that even in, in our instance, fire, like holy fire, like born of faith and join with it, relating to God, the con uh, relating to God, the conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider and bestower of eternal salvation through Christ. Now, we see all these things. Oh, wait, wait. D right here, right? It's his belief with the prominent, with the pro, uh, pre, uh, pre, uh, pre, uh, pre, uh, let me see this. With the strongest main element. Okay, yeah, strongest main. Okay, I get it, right? Now, from the idea of trust, like chief trust or confidence, whether in God and Christ, springing from faith in the same. So the Lord, the Lord gives us reasons to be persuaded into Him, and persuaded to uh, to be persuaded to believe in Him, to have that conviction, a holy fervor in Him through the signs that He shows us that He exists. One being Him splitting the sea for us to walk through, Him giving us manna, the rock being split and water coming out of it. All these things, Deuteronomy twenty-eight, man, and th this is going in, and this is going into us believing in him now, because faith cometh by hearing. Oh wait, wait, wait. before we go there, I want to I want to make this point too. Right? It says the truth is a uh, truth. It says like the, with the with the included idea of trust. That's honestly where you get faith from. 
Because when you look at the word faith, let's go into the Hebrew. Right. Whoa, where did I see? Where did I go? Faith, no faith. I'm a one, right? No, it means faithfulness, uh, faithfulness, trusting, faithful, trusty. It comes from the root, the root word to support, confirm, to be faithful, but to confirm, right? To confirm our faith in the Lord, our faith in the Lord, right? Our belief in the Lord is confirmed through the signs that he shows us. He's given us a reason to believe in him. He showed us, He showed, since he chose us out of this world, he showed us signs where there'd be people on the streets, Deuteronomy chapter 28, freaking Isaiah uh, 42, all the things, the archaeology to point to where we are the Israelites and that we need to believe in him. That's how he does with us. You know, with the people who didn't, he rejected, he sends them lies. He sends them things contrary. He sends them smooth things. That's why the Christian church is so dangerous, because that is the epitome of that. It's the, it's the epitome of being rejected. It's the epitome, epitome of things that are just contrary to the Lord. Now, for us being practicing Israelites, the Lord gives us reasons to confirm our faith and put trust in him through the signs that he shows us, through, through the things that he shows us. And the majority of that, for the most part, comes through us hearing the word of God, actually hearing it in its authenticity. Because in Christian in the Christian church, we don't get that. We get some we get something in Galatians, we get John 3:16, we might get Philippians. That's it. That, honestly, that, that's all I ever heard in the Christian church. Right? That, that, that's all I ever heard in the Christian church. Is, is that you're not getting you're not getting the saith the Lord from, from, from the, the pastors. These pastors scatter the sheep. These pastors, he's back again, bro. Yeah, you, you, I, I'm not trying to hear it, bro. You're going right, you're going right back. You're going right back. What is it? What is it? There we go. Yeah, out of here, man. So, what I was saying is, the, the, these pastors are scattering the sheep. They're not giving the Bible in its authenticity, but the Israelites are doing that. We're telling you what's going to happen. We're, we're telling you about prophecies that's already happened to boost your faith, to trust in what we're saying, which is ultimately trust in what the Lord's saying. Trust in what Yahweh Shai is saying, because that's what we stand on. We're giving you, like, we're showing you, we show people Daniel chapters. I say this all the time, Daniel chapter 7. You have you can Google this now. Scientists don't know how to explain how Daniel had the breakdown about how Babylon would rise up to be a great power to be taken over by Greece, I mean, uh, taken over by uh, uh, Persian Medes be taken over by the Grecians, to be taken over by the Romans. They don't have no answers to things like that. But we can show people that on the streets, like, dang, like, oh, I, I've never heard that before. Yeah, because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Let's get that. This is how the Lord persuades us into worshiping him, persuades us to being, persuades us into following the route to be chosen. Now, this is uh, Romans 10, verse 17. So, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. They hear the word of God. They hear Deuteronomy 28. They hear the curses. They hear the prophecies. We're getting people that like, we can, you can honestly start, you can even start off a conversation about what uh, 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 the mark is, right? Because I know they started to clamp down on the, saying the, what saying the mark of you know what, because it's starting to revate, uh, it's starting to relate too much to the, you know, the, this, I can't even say that no more because of YouTube. So you can start off conversations like that, or how it's talking about the RFID chip and things like that. And you can show that. You can make the Bible real and show things, show people like that and give them reasons to believe. I call that, I have a lesson on that too, called faith boosters. That's something that'll persuade you and confirm your faith. Because we see this already happening. We saw new, we see news channels talking about putting a, a RFID chip into people. To have uh, so-called uh, certain records in there, you know what I mean by so-called, so-called, uh, uh, no matter what, so-called certain records in there, because I can't say that on YouTube. Certain records, right? We see that you and, and it's things like that that like it has wisdom, it's esoteric wisdom, or like wisdom that only certain people know in this book. 
And we can show that to people and to show the divinity, the, the divinity in it, right? To bring people into this truth, to persuade them to actually believe in the Lord. How you're supposed to, not like how the Christians say, but how you're supposed to in the truth and the spirit. And that cometh by hearing the word of God. That comes by hearing the word of God in its authenticity. Now, let's get an example of that. Deuteronomy 30. Awful lot of precepts tonight. Deuteronomy 30, verse 1. It says, And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. Now, this is Deuteronomy 30. This is after Paul's read the law to Israel. This is at, right after Deuteronomy chapter 28. Hell, this is two chapters after, right? When all things shall come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. The blessing is Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 through 14. And the curses is 15 through the rest of the chapter, right? When he shall come upon thee, it says, uh, which I've said before thee, thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God have driven thee. We shall call them to mind. Why? By hearing it, by reading it. That's something that shows you that God is real. This told, it told you about slave ships. It tells you about how another man is going to take your wife. Another man is going to come from one, one end of the earth all the way to the other and to put you into captivity. That's something we can see that happened, right? And that's something that persuades us into believing we're Israelites. We all had that. All of us have a testimony of how we came into this truth. And it all revolves around this, bro. Hearing this in its authenticity. Hearing this how it's supposed to be brought out. And then seeking the Lord. That's how he persuaded us, bro. Because he could have made it if, if he didn't, if he wanted to reject you, instead of walking down that street to see the Israelites or clicking on this video to see the Israelites, he could have had you do something else. He could have had you do something else, but he wanted you to hear that. So that now you have a testimony to of how you came into this truth by hearing the word of God. And we see that through Deuteronomy 30. Because we're going to call this into mind where, whatever nation, in whatever nation we're in, right? In verse 2, and it says, And thou shalt return after we after we call this into mind, after we remember this and read this word of God, we shall call, we, then after that we shall return unto the Lord. Return unto the Lord, bro. That's the fruit that's going to be born. That's the fruit that, that, that the Lord sowed in us, right? That law, we're going to return unto the Lord after hearing the word of God. Since he wanted to persuade us to bring to, to, to bring us out of this world. That's why we're returning unto the Lord after that. It says, and thou shalt return unto the Lord thy God and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, which is the law. This cut, this is this is a cut on Christianity because this is talking about prior to your salvation, you're going to return unto the Lord thy God and keep the commandments. You're going to keep like, like you're going to keep the commandments. There's no oh, there's no word. That, that's how you know it's demonic. Because that's straight say that's opposing what this is saying. You're opposing what the Lord says through Moses. Now, verse summary, verse two again. And said, Thou shalt return unto the Lord thy God and shall obey his obey his voice. I mean, avoid, avoid, oh, obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children, with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that uh, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. Turn thy captivity means save you from your captivity. Turn your captivity is, means that literally save you from your captivity. Turn, turn you away from your captivity. You mean save you from your captivity. It says, and have compassion upon thee. And honestly, even Christians, I'll, I'll make this point real quick. Even Christians have to admit that this, this hasn't happened yet. So that if this hasn't happened yet, that means to return to the Lord thy God, you have to keep the commandments, which is also circumcising your heart, like it says in Romans chapter 2. But that's a New Testament concept. Okay, but I'm going to keep going. And so return to the Lord thy God and gather thee from all nations, whether thy God have scattered thee. Now, this is also a cut on all you morons, right? I'm going to say it like this. You morons who say we can't keep the law outside of our outside of our land. This says we're gonna get saved from our from wherever land we're in when we're in captivity. When we keep the commandments, 
showing you that you can keep the commandments outside of your land. What sense would it make for you to not be able to keep the, what sense would it, would it make for the Lord to put you into captivity, right? For not keeping the commandments and then turn around trying to make a doctor say you now, so now you can't keep the commandments. What kind of cross, like, <laughs> that's backwards, bro. It's double-minded. It's dumb, but I digress, right? It says, it's to turn that captivity, have compassion upon thee, return and gather thee from all nations whether the Lord thy God have scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the outermost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. That hasn't that hasn't happened yet. So that's something that's too happened, proving that you have to keep the commandments and proving that once you hear Deuteronomy, this is an example, once you hear Deuteronomy uh, 28 and look upon the curses, the curses really, because we can see that, we look upon these curses, show, and it shows that we're Israelites, we're persuaded to keep this, we're persuaded to believe that we're Israelites. And we're persuaded, since we're persuaded to believe they're Israelites, we start keeping the commandments to where that Deuteronomy chapter 20, 28 verse 1 happens. Right. Because there's no reason if we're not Israelites, there's no reason to keep the laws. But knowing that we're Israelites being persuaded by God to keep the laws, since we know that we're Israelites being persuaded by God to believe that. Right. Damn, freaking Russians, man. Every time, man. <laughs> freaking Russia and Russia, we bug you. But uh. Knowing that since the Lord has persuaded us through Deuteronomy 28 to show us that we're Israelites, right? Now we have a reason or an unction or a calling to keep the commandments, right? Because look at this. That's when Deuteronomy, this is when Deuteronomy, uh, I guess I can't do it that way. That's when Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 takes place. We return unto the Lord thy God. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass. If thou, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of, of the, the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. When is he going to do that? When he turns our captivity. And when is he going to turn our captivity? When we look upon the curses, remember ourselves, and return unto the Lord thy God. And that happens through the persuasion he gives us through the word, through the word being sown in us. Why? Because he ultimately chose us. So let me see. Uh that's pretty much it on that point, right? But I want to key in on this thing. The last part. I got a few more precepts before I close out. Uh first Corinthians 1, verse 9. This 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 persuasion, this persuasion that the Lord gives us is called the calling, right? He When he calls you into the fellowship with the Son, and here, and here it is right here, right? This is 1 Corinthians 1, verse 9. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son. How are we called into the fellowship of the Son? Because he, draw, he drew us to him, like it says in John 6. He drew us to him. Let's look at this, right? We're called... Called to call aloud, to utter a loud voice, to call, call by name, right? To receive a name of, receive a name. It means to call, basically to call out, right? We've been called or, or chosen, right? He called us into the fellowship of the Son by drawing drawing us near to him. And he did that through you hearing Deuteronomy 28. You uh, going to Israelites and going to Israelite camps. And, and that's the importance of camps because how else are people going to figure out the Israelites? That's a whole other topic, though. But you walking past the Israelites, them letting you know. Then uh, you or you watching a you stumbling upon an Israelite video and finding out you're Israelite. That's him calling and drawing near unto you. And that's and that's also the church because when you look at the word church in the Greek, ekklesia, uh, I believe I'm saying ekklesia. Yeah, it's really the called out ones. Now, when you look at this, it's a compound word for being. Uh, it's like out from. I believe that's out from. Yeah, out or away from. To call out, yeah, it's the same word from, for call in, uh, uh, the same Greek word for call in verse 9, right? That's the church, the called out ones. And now when you see that, that's only applicable to the Israelites. Even even has that in, in the outline of biblical usage. 
the assembly of the Israelites. The assembly of the Israelites are the ones called out of this world. We're the ones called out of this world for to receive salvation, to show forth the, to show forth our righteousness through keeping the law and the faith. We are that church. We are the called out ones. We're the ones who've been bidden to the marriage. We are the people who've been drawn out through Yahweh, drawn out to Yahweh Shai. Now, that's and and that that calling that calling comes from the Lord persuading you to be into this truth. Now, let's go into some other verses. 2 Timothy 1 verse, is it 1 and 9? I believe that's it. Yeah. Now, we've already showed a dichotomy. Or let's just say that, oh, geez, words, that a contrast, right? Dichotomy works too. But between the people who are going to perish and the people who are going to re receive eternal life, eternal life. Now, the people who are going to be, are going to perish are going to receive the lie because they're damned. They're chosen or selected for destruction. Now, for us who who uh, who are chosen to keep these laws, chosen to be, to follow after the Lord God, that's the people who have the invitation to receive eternal life. That's why. And the reason I'm saying that is because when it says right here, who are who have saved us, because the people who fall through into the end, those are the people who are going to be saved, like Christ says, who have saved us and called us with a holy calling. What is that calling, that persuasion he sends unto us to believe in him? It says, not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace. Now, what does that mean? Not according to works. That means you didn't do anything to earn that calling. Him persuading you and him persuading you to, to be the, one of the chosen ones, you did nothing to deserve it. That's why he be choosing that, and, uh, and what's evident of that is he be choosing some of the worst of us, man. Hell, even Paul was killed. Paul was in there uh, 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 murdering the church, and alert, and the, and the Lord, and the Lord chose him. It even says he's my. Look, look, watch this, watch this, right? Uh, let me see. Let me just see elect. Uh, I think it's. Let me look for election. Election. I forgot what verse it is. I just know it says this in the Greek too. Romans, Romans 9, that election may stand. This purpose according to election. See, this word election gets translated into chosen, into chosen and election. One time for chosen. And that one time for chosen is Acts, where he talks about Paul. It says, it says, but the Lord, but the Lord uh, said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. That's a reference to Paul. Paul was one of the, Paul was one of the least among, he taught, Paul is the least among the apostles. Paul was a murderer of the church. He was a waster of the church. He was one of the worst of us. And the Lord chose him and pulled them, pulled them out of what he was doing. So now he's going to bear his name. Now he's gonna start teaching our people. Here comes the freaking Russians again. Now he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna bear his name, and it's the same thing with us. He be choosing some of the worst of us to bring us into this truth. He bring past murderers in this truth, drug dealers in this truth, people who have just done a whole bunch of evil things into this truth, man. There's, and, and we did nothing to deserve it. It is ultimately what the Lord chose chose you for that purpose. He since he chose you to bring you out of this, he, he, he since he chose you to bring you out of that right. He's gonna put he's gonna put you in a position to be persuaded to be to, to leave that and to follow him in that holy calling, not according to your works, not according to what you did. You did nothing to deserve it, but because he showed grace upon you. That's what grace comes from, man. Now, let me go back to this. It says, but according to his his purpose and grace, which was given uh, given us in Christ in Christ Jesus or Yahweh before the world began. Before the world began, before the, the inception of the world, before the creation of the world, the Lord already had his elect already chosen, man. He already did that. He already had people who was going to choose. He already had people who was going to reject. He that for, I, 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 this, this is the verse I was alluding to in the beginning when I first started talking. Now, this is, this is, this is something that we need to know, bro. Because knowing this, now it, it's, it's almost like, I mean, this is just something esoteric. A lot of Israelites don't know. It's something that's just imperative to know and to know how to move. 
and know how the Lord moves. Because you have to, if you know, if you know how the Lord's plan is, if you know how the Lord moves and the and the way his Lord plan is, that the Lord's plan is, you can now get in tune to what he's what he, what he wants out of you and what he wants out of this world, man. What he, you understand what his will is. You understand that he has a script. You understand that he has he has people. He has people to be the antagonists. He has people to be the antagonists of our people. He has people to be the protagonists, which are the elected, the people who are chosen. And even inside of that chosen people, he has in the one third, he has a chosen inside of that, which is the 144, which you talked about on Monday. It's things like that. These are these are these are wise things that we need to understand. These are wise things we need, especially when it comes to trying to wake our people up, because some people aren't, just aren't meant to get it. And this saves you a lot of heartache and a lot of trouble. Trying to beat your head, trying to beat somebody over the head with the Bible who's just not gonna get it. Things like this is imperative. Now, back to what I was saying is th him persuading you out of this world, him persuading you to, to move out of this world by showing you showing you signs through the word of God and through other things, right? Is that holy calling. Now, since we since we feel as though we have that calling, we need to try to make that cut that. <laughs> That uh, the calling in that election, sure, like it says to Peter. Oh, damn. Dang, I did it again. How did I do it again, bro? There we go. Because we've since as though we feel that we have that calling. And we feel like we've been uh, chosen out of this world. We need to give diligence, and by giving diligence, that means to study, bro. And it says, "Well, this is Second Peter one verse ten. It says, wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, ye shall never fall." How do you do that by studying? If we know the Lord's choosing people, and we know the Lord has a, 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 is calling people. And you feel like you, if you're one of those people, you will study. You will do the things that the elect will do. You'll figure out what the you'll figure out what the elect the, 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 the elect of Israel is going to do and do that. Like you'll be doing this. Oh shoot. Revelations, uh Revelations 14, verse 12. Here's the patience of the saints. This this in this context is talking about the saints. Even in this context, is really the 144 as well. Even the Christians know that. Now, if I if, if I want to be a part, because look, at, hold up. Let me, let me read this in, in context. Verse 1, Revelation 14, verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a, a lamb stood on the Mount on the Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. The context is the 144,000. The context of the patience of the saints are these saints, which are the 144. If I want to be one of the 144, if I feel like I'm called to be part of the 144, if I feel like I'm elected to be part of the 144, I'm going to do the works of them. I'm going to give diligence to do that by attending to study. And what am I going to be studying? Here's the patience of this, verse 12, here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Yahweh Shai. I'm going to do my best to understand the commandments of God. If I don't know, I'm going to figure out what the answers are to ex explain on certain things, whether it be as far as the law or whether it be as far as faith, so I can be in tune with it, so I can be part of the 144. That's what we need to be working on, man. That, that that's, that's you giving diligence to make your calling and election sure, man. But that's pretty much it. That's all I got, man. With that, I want to say, Call Halal Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And I want to, I hope the, I hope Israel out there is uh, edified through that breakdown. I got plenty more. And don't forget, I'll just do this. I'll do this too. One more time. Don't forget to drop your questions for mail, for Mailbag Monday. Let me see. Right here. I already put the post for volume three. Don't forget to drop your questions down there, and I will answer your questions to the best of my ability. To, <laughs> to uh, oh yeah, to the best of my ability, man. So with that, I hope y'all was edified, and I will say call all y'all, Bashim y'all shy again, because you can never give too much honor. You can never give too many, too many, or too much honors to the Lord, man. And say shalom.